Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and this week's video is pretty much in response to a viewer comment on an earlier video. Uh, you've heard me speak of the dirty side of the Tin Barn, uh, which is uh, basically behind the camera. But uh, that's where grinding wheels, sanders, uh, welding machine, that type of equipment is, is stored. And I don't often, unless the entire project is a welding project or something like that, I don't often uh, carry the camera over there. Just Again, just simply because it's uh, grinders, buffers, uh, sanders, and that kind of thing. But in a previous video, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago, uh, I carried the camera over there and a viewer commented on a Scotch-Brite wheel that I had mounted on an electric motor. Uh, here's a, here's a, just a picture of it. It's a simple little setup. Uh, uh, this happens to be a, a gray uh, Scotch-Brite wheel, uh, fine uh, grip, and it's mounted onto a little GE electric motor that I that's been around the shop here for years but uh, it's a low power motor probably third horse 1720 rpm uh, it's actually something that I, uh, I'm not concerned about getting hung up in anything like that because it's very easily stalled but in any case the uh, the viewer commented on it and uh, said he'd be very interested in seeing how that adapter was made to go from the motor uh, to the Scotch-Brite wheel. Now those of us have got a lathe are, are probably going to say, well that's that's a simple little project. And to a degree it is, but uh, still for somebody that's not uh, uh, used to uh, crafting or making little items like this, it might be a novel little thing to see done. So what I'm going to do today I've got this, uh, this is a half horse 1725 RPM uh, motor that I just had on the shelf here. I think this come off of a, a saw, a table saw I had some time back. But I'm kind of in between projects right now and so I thought it might be a good time to do something simple like this uh, for no real purpose other than to show how it's done. I don't really need it, need to do it, but what I'm going to do today is uh, is adapt this very coarse Scotch Brite wheel. This is a uh, grade 5 ACRS, uh, half inch thick. I've got this, got one of these mounted on another motor back over in the dirty side, and it's coarse enough it actually throws sparks on steel. But I'm going to use it as an example to to mount on this motor. I have a piece of one inch round stock here. It's three and a half inches long. What's going to be involved is boring one end of this out about an inch, inch and a half to where it will slide up on this 5-8 shaft and putting a grub screw in it, set screw, to hold it on this keyway. On the other end what we'll do is adapt this plate to it. Now this, or not plate, but a wheel. This wheel has a one inch opening. I actually had a couple of these bushings from a former project that I've done that turns that half inch down, or one inch down to a half inch. So what we'll do in the other end is bore this out half inch and install this bolt in it. This is just a regular half 13 bolt that I've cut the head off of. We'll put that in and then pin it. And we'll do it at such a distance where the adapter can ride on this bolt, a couple washers on each side of it, and then screwed down tight. So let's turn to the lathe now and put the 5 8 uh, bore in this first. Okay, at the lathe now, the first thing we're going to do is drill for the uh, 5 8 inch shaft on the motor. 
The one I showed you uh, the picture of a little earlier actually had a half inch shaft motor. This motor we're going to use for this uh, demonstration today has a 5 8 inch shaft. Let's run our starter hole in and next I think what we're going to do is use a quarter inch bit uh, just as a pilot. Alright, we'll zero out our tailstock DRO. Go in about an inch and a quarter. All right, I'm going to put the five eighths inch bit in now. If I had a 5 8 reamer, which I do not have, I'd drill this a 64 less than 5 8 and then ream it out. But I do not have a, a 5 8 reamer, so we're, we're going to go uh, just with a drill bit, and I believe it'll be okay again for this demonstration today. Slow our RPMs down. For this 5.8 shaft, I had marked the drill bit of how deep I actually wanted to go, which was, let's look on the DRO right quick, about 1.325, something like that. All right, I'm going to take this out, carry it over to the uh, motor, and be sure it uh, be sure it'll fit over it. If it doesn't go over the shaft, we may have to come back and uh, and bore just a little bit there. But I think, if anything, it's going to have a uh, a loose fit. But I'll be right back. Okay, this fit over the uh, motor shaft uh, quite well. It was just a little bit loose which is of course what you expect with a with a drill bit. But now we're going to turn it around and and work on our and work on the other end here which as I said earlier what we're going to do in it is insert this half inch bolt that I cut the head off of and actually cut a little bit off on the length of the threads. But we're going to insert that inside and I am going to ream this one. I have a, a half inch ream, half inch chucking reamer. So just like before what we'll do is start with our center drill. Then we'll go with the same quarter inch starter drill. Could probably drill this half inch without a starter drill. But I don't know. I just kind of like to use one when I can. Alright, we'll set our DRO, zero out that. We're going to come in an inch and a quarter. Now, for the reamer, I'm going to drill this with a 3164 which is of course a half inch um, a 30 excuse me it's a 64th less than a half inch slow our rpms down a little bit more for this larger bit zero out the DRO again Alright, now we'll take the uh, 
the half inch plus a thousandth reamer and ream that hole out. This reamer is part of a set of what's called chucking reamers and for each size there's the nominal like half inch then there's one that's a half inch minus a thousandth and then this this one which is a half inch plus a thousandth. Now I'm sorry I'm actually going with the minus a thousandths here because as we all know the uh, the shaft on a bolt is actually a little less than a half inch so I'm going to half inch minus one thousandths and as you've heard me say before with a reamer what I like to do is just get in do my business and get out And what we're looking for on this space right here is we want to be able to put a backing washer, the wheel, then our final washer, and the nut on the end. So that distance right there appears to be just right. Now let's turn to the mill and what we're going to do is drill and pin this adapter shaft to this half inch shaft half inch bolt on the other end we're going to drill and tap uh, for a grub screw okay over at the mill now we're going to mount our workpiece in this v block and first off first end we're going to work on is this one with the uh with the bolt so let's come down here we want to find the center on the y-axis i'm going to take that out of the way for just a moment and zero out the y-axis and of course i'm sure everyone watching this is familiar with the edge finder but all we're looking to do is just move this until it just kicks off. Alright, it should be touching now. And it kicked off. So Y one half on the DRO. Now we can move this to zero on the Y axis. And I'm going to lock it down right there. Now I want to come in uh, about half the distance, which we said was an inch and a quarter on that. So we're going to come in about six to five. And we'll touch the probe again until it just kicks off. All right, kicked off there. We'll zero out the x-axis this time. Now this probe is 200 thousandths thick. So to get this directly in center, we need to come over 100 thousandths to take care of half the thickness of the probe. I'll zero out the X again. Now we'll come in to 625 thousandths. And lock the Y down. And we're going to use our starter drill again. What I'm going to be using to pin these two pieces together is a 532 spring pin. And we're going to drill these pieces at the same time. I'm just going to be sure that stays in. Ordinarily, I don't do a lot of hammering uh, 
on the mill table, but to install it, I'm going to see if I can install this spring pin with it, everything right here in the vise. Remember, we're at uh, zero on the Y axis now, which we'll need when we do the other end as well. But I'm going to come out here just a little ways. Alright, those two pieces are pinned together now. So we can see we got a burr off this side. So before I turn this around and start working on this end, I'm going to run in there actual to the actual uh, Scott's Bright wheel that I use and knock these burrs off. Alright, I like using these spring pins or roll pins uh, whenever possible. I do not like to use them in blind holes because other than drilling them out, there's no way whatsoever to get them out of a blind hole. But that cleans up really well. And I've several things that I purchased at Harbor Freight. If you're familiar with your local Harbor Freight, you know that they've got an entire rack of various different assortments like this. Uh, uh, this ha happens to be the roll pin assortment, but I have these for socket head cap screws, roll pins, uh, rubber washers. Uh, don't remember, let's see. Out of frame right now, but I've got them for PTO pin assortment, socket head cap screws, set screws, uh, ceiling washer assortments. O-ring assortments, hitch clip assortments, all different kinds of, uh, of assortments that come in very handy to have around the shop. So now let's install this again. And this time what we're going to do is drill and tap for a quarter inch grub screw to hold this onto the uh, motor shaft. So I'll come back to the Z-axis, I mean, I'm sorry, come back to the zero on the Y-axis again. And since the same V-block, v same piece of material, uh, we should definitely still be in the center. And what I'm going to do this time, I showed you getting the uh, exactly 0.625 off the end down there. What I'm going to do this time is simply get it close. Just to show you that, you know, some things you can be as precise as you need to be. And in this case, I'm going to line up the center of my drill bit with that edge right there. Zero out the x-axis. And we're at, that come out to 1.3 inches there uh, after we uh, run the drill bit in it. So 0 0.65 will definitely be close enough to the center line. And this is a stubby drill bit. I'm going to see if it wants to wander when it touches on this round surface. If it does, we'll take it out and put the uh, center drill in. That acts like it's going to work just fine. And this is the tap drill for quarter 20. This is a two fluted spiral tap again in quarter 20. Mill in the slowest speed it's got, which is about 115 RPM. A little juice. Okay, I think we might be ready to go back over to the workbench and put all these pieces together. 
I will carry this again over there to the Scotch Sprite wheel and uh, deburr that little bit right there. Okay, there's one more step we need to do to this before we go back to the workbench and put it together. And that's put a couple of flats on each side of this shaft. We're going to make this three quarters of an inch. Uh, the nut that fits on this on half 13 will be three quarters. So we'll make this three quarters as well. And that means with a one inch, we need to take a quarter inch off the total diameter, 125 thousandths off each side. Now that would be cutting it pretty close if we did that over this slot. So I'm going to move this off center a little bit and cut our flats over here. To hold those flats, I'm going to mount this in a 5C collet. Okay, I'm sure most all of you are familiar with the collet blocks, but this is a square collet block, holds the uh, 5C collets. I've got it mounted in there, and I'm going to put a parallel to bridge the ways in the vise. And of course, we've got to take the the chuck out and put the collet in. All right, I've got that icometer on that, and I'm pretty pretty satisfied. But I got it lined up with my marks there. Let's come down. And we will just touch off and zero out the DRO. We want to come down 125 thousandths. I've got the X axis locked now. I'm going to take about 50. Another 50. And the final 25. Alright, what I did on this first cut, I don't think I mentioned it, but I lined up the collet block right with the edge of this jaw. So when I flip it now, and again I think it's obvious, but the reason I use the collet block instead of just holding that in the V block is I can get a perfect 180 degree flip with the collet block. this lined up and since we got the X position locked we should be ready to go with this side again I'll touch off zero should be the same place which it is Alright, before we take that out, I'm going to get a three quarter inch wrench and just be sure that that fits, which it does. That's what we're looking for to be able to hold this when it's on the motor shaft. Now, I bet you can probably guess what I'm going to do next. I'm going to carry this over to the Scott Sprite wheel in the dirty side of the tin barn and deburr that. Alright. Let's uh, see if we can assemble everything. We'll, well, before we slide that on there, let's 
got a quarter twenty set screw here. We'll line that up with the keyway in the motor shaft. Now if you're wondering why I didn't broach out a keyway in this, I didn't I can broach out keyways <clears throat> passing all the way through. But I do not have any brooches that will will do a blind or any way to do a blind brooch. So let's line that up. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I expect there to be a little bit of run out uh, in this shaft. Yeah, there's a little bit of run out at this end. Simply because I didn't have a reamed fit over this. Uh, loosen that up and I'll show you there. There's a little bit of slack. Anytime you use a drill bit, it's it's going to oversize the hole. And so that is going to account for this little bit of run out. But remember this is, in this case, it's for a deburring wheel, which will find true round after a couple of uses. Or if you were brave enough to do this for a uh, grinder wheel, it too will, if you dress it, will find center. So we'll put the washer on. This has a error indicating rotation. Put a bushing in. Our other washer. Now let me grab a couple three-quarter inch wrenches. And I'm using a nylock locking nut on this side. The motor rotation on this motor is correct for just a standard nut in that it will be trying to tighten the whole time. The one I showed you the picture of earlier, uh, it, it rotates in the opposite direction but with a locking nut on you shouldn't have any issue with it uh, coming off. Okay. So again, I expect there to be a little bit of run out in this. Let me grab a little clamp here and see if I can clamp the motor down to the table just to keep it from vibrating off. Okay, as I told you at the beginning of this video, I got a little story that kind of goes along with this project. In mid 1970s, uh, October 1974 to be exact, uh, my wife and I came back to North Carolina after being gone in the in the Air Force for four years. Uh, most of that time spent in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Uh, a little time in Orlando, Florida, and some in Southeast Asia and Thailand. But when we come back home, we didn't have a whole lot. I had a few hand tools, uh, some that my daddy had given me, some that I had picked up uh, over the previous four years uh, in the military. But I didn't have any shop tools at all. And I carried my lawnmower blades uh, up to my daddy's one day to sharpen them on his bench grinder. and. My brother-in-law happened to be there and he said, uh, don't you have a bench grinder? And I told him uh, I didn't. He said, well, have you got an electric motor? And it just so happened there was one sitting there in the barn up there at Daddy's that was, Lord only knows what it come off of, probably an old washing machine or no telling what. Uh, I said, well, right there's one and I asked Daddy if I could have it and he said, yeah. I said, but I don't have any way of mounting a grinder wheel onto it. And I said, I can, I can run down to the hardware store and pick up a grinder wheel. And my brother-in-law, uh, 
said, I can take care of that for you. I said, okay. And, you know, at that point, I was young. I was uh, 22, 23 years old. Uh, didn't know much about the outside world, having spent pretty much the summer after high school going into the Air Force. So military was about all I knew about. And he said, let me take a couple of measurements. And he measured the uh, uh, shaft on the motor. And we looked at the grinding wheels on Daddy's bench grinder. I don't remember now what size they were. He said, I'll bring you something in a couple of days. The guys in the machine shop uh, at work, I'll have them to make you something. I didn't have any idea what he was talking about. I didn't know what a machine shop was. But he come back a couple of days later with something very similar to what we just made in this video. Uh, and I remember being a little bit amazed that ordinary folks, common folks, could make something like that. I thought stuff like that come from big factories. But in reality, all it was, again, was just like something was made here today. Slid on the motor shaft, the grinding wheel slid on the that. And I had I used that little grinder, I mounted it on a pedestal, and I used that little, probably again, a third horse, uh, quarter horse, no more than a third horse motor, with that grinding wheel on it for 20, 30, many years. Uh, it, I think it finally went off with a load of scrap iron not too long ago as the motor finally gave up the ghost. But that's why when that viewer um, made the comment about he'd like to see how that was done, why it really rang, rang a bell with me. Because I had been in a similar situation some, you know, 40 years ago almost, and was, no, make that 50 years ago. I'm getting old. But I uh, was kind of intrigued by his comment. But I hope you guys got a little enjoyment out of it, and I hope the one that com made that comment watches this video as well. You guys take care, and I'll see you on the next one.